Hey there. So this is vlog number two. Um, and, um, you know, my first one was kind of scary because I played um, some Leonard Cohen, everybody knows, um, and before he died. And, you know, and it was just sort of like, you know, my statement of how I was feeling about the political climate and everything that was going on with the elections, yada, yada, yada. Anyway, like it was, you know, kind of spooky because he died like a few days after I posted it. Um, that being said, I, um, I am an artist and, um, and I am a bit, you know, I mean, I think, I think obviously all artists are, you know, um, but, but I, I do have like a strong, um, connection to, uh, you know, the spirit world and to, um, being kind of empathic, um, doesn't mean I can read your mind or anything like guess what number you're thinking or anything like that. But, um, you know, when I create, I do feel like it comes from either the collective unconscious or God or the spirit world or, you know, my personal beliefs, which is a combination of everything. So, you know, sometimes, um, you know, I just sort of subconsciously feel things coming. Um, other times I know things are coming because I'm able to kind of um, decode like a lot of signs that I see and, and make accurate predictions about things obviously I'm not always right um, but a lot of times I am <laughs> um, and you know so that being said yes that, that was a little bit uh, weird and hopefully nobody will drop dead after I post this vlog <laughs> speaking of dead people um, so I went to see the screening of the latest Sid and Nancy doc sad vacation and I did a blog about it um, uh, that was sort of like a study of all the movies that have been released on the topic. Um, the main ones being um, this new one, Sad Vacation, which is a documentary. Also, um, the documentary Who Killed Nancy, which I think was a, was a, a great documentary um, that you can watch on YouTube um, or Netflix. Um, and even, um, you know, the more parody uh, movie that came out in the 80s by Alex Cox, Sid and Nancy, which, um, you know, like I said, it's almost more parody style. But at the same time, it does have, you know, like in, in its own artistic way, has sort of um, almost kind of like what I'm talking about, um, even though even though it was almost like a fiction fictional version of the story, it, it, it told its own truth um, artistically through like um, artistic divinity. So you can read about that all in my blog at reallexavon.com. I don't want to banter on about it forever <laughs> because I tend to do that. Um, but basically, I just want to say that, you know, um, it's a rough subject, um, it, you know, talking about obviously um, suicide and, and um, any kind of, you know, um, relationship violence um, and, you know, and just, you know, like I said, you can read my blog, like everything that, you know, that happened to those people and that like society really doesn't, um, understand you know why things went down the way they did or why we still don't you know why there's still so many unanswered questions um and uh, i just do want to state for the record that you know i do not have any kind of like um a morose obsession um or anything like that with with you know negative or destructive things um um, and when I do choose to like cover a topic or dive into a topic that is, you, you know, a more a, like of a darker element, you know, so something other than like lipstick, which I love, you know, reviewing too. <laughs> but I'm just saying that, you know, when I do choose to take on like a, a political or social topic, um, I do so because the information came to me, really. You know, I mean, like I said, I do like have a really strong faith. Um, which I don't even know why I have a faith at all anymore because really, like my life, life has not been so great lately. But I still do. Um, you know, I you know, like when there's enough signs that are like really strong um, for me, I do pay attention to them. Um, and Sid and Nancy's story had really been coming at me, um, like for the majority of my life. Um, you know, part of part of that is because I'm a music fan. So you know, like I was never um, attracted to the story because of you know the romance or 
the um, destruction of said romance. For me, it was about the Sex Pistols and the music and the fashion. You know, that that was the stuff that I was into. Um, but, you know, uh, if you're going to study the, the history and biography of the band um, and everything that happened, then, you know, then what went down with, with Sid and Nancy is part of that. So, um, you know, that's, you know, how it started for me. And then over the years, um, it just sort of like reared its head here and there. Um, and, um, you know, so, you know, like I said, I, when I do take on heavier topics, it's not something that I do, um, lightheartedly. I did put a lot of thought into it. Um, the, the blog that I wrote, um, is just my objective opinion based on the information that I had um, from watching all the movies um, and reading all the books and doing my own independent research um, and, you know, knowing people that knew them or talking to people um, as well as like some information that was passed to me in confidence, you know, by ob obviously by people I can't name. Um, but that's where, and that's not to say that any of them are telling the truth either, <laughs> you know, but um, obviously the only people that really know what happened um, are unfortunately, uh, well, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> the only people that know what happened are the ones that were there. We won't say whether they're all dead or not. Um, I would have a way to know that for sure, would I? <laughs> not for not for sure, for sure. Anyway, um, you know, it was something that's that, that's you know sort of been wearing on me for a long time, and and I kind of wrote my piece to kind of maybe sort of like squash that demon um, because. Um, it's something that's like sort of, you know, there, there, there's a part of the Sid Nancy story that, um, that really bothers me, it, which is the fact of, um, not so much of what went down because it was, you know, I, I really think, you know, they were victims of themselves. They were victims of circumstance, um, but mostly victims of, them, of themselves and of their parents and of the system and all that stuff. But at the same time, you know, we do make our own choices of like how we choose to deal with those things. And, you know, for me, I feel like, you know, they, they, what they did, you know, and how they lived was a huge cop out, especially for being that young. Um, cause you know, I'm like, I'm twice their age, uh, and, and I'm still here, you know, um, I haven't gone out, out like that yet. So, you know, to me, to, 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 just to, to carry on so destructively at such a young age and call yourself punk, um, is a false statement because to me, punk rock is, is about surviving. And, um, you know, if you're like anti-establishment and anti-government and, you know, you know, the idea was to tear things down, to build new things, um, and to fight for people, uh, you know, to fight for underprivileged people and minorities, and women, um, you know, underprivileged people, uh, freaks, artists, you know, homosexuals, like everyone, everyone who was, you know, um, a, was different or expressive or sensitive or, you know, whatever, you know, um, it was supposed to be, you know, uh, t to me, any subculture is really uh, about, you know, this should, or at least should be about, um, you know, s standing up for the underdog and, and showing what, what your culture has to offer society. Um, so for me, um, you know, regardless of, you know, regardless of who killed her, um, just the fa the fact that they, um, you know, the fact that they engaged in an abu abusive, you know, I think, I feel like they were both abusive to each other. Um, and, you know, very well seems like they got off on it, but, um, but there's a fine line there because it seems like, you know, it's like, okay, they got off on it, but then there was those times where they didn't. Um, so to, you know, to me, you know, like that's nothing to emulate, <laughs> you know, um, I would not want to be in a relationship with, um, you know, with somebody who was violent towards me, um, or degrading towards me or, you know, like, like, and, and you know, any of that stuff outside of, you know, like when you are privately role playing. Um, and I, and I feel, you know, I kind of feel like a lot of what they were doing was like a public role play. Um, 
which would be okay if it wasn't something that was like so disruptive. It's like, don't bring the world into, um, you know, into your, into your role play of, awful thing of awful things you know what i mean um and it's really unfortunate you know because had they gotten off the drugs um there was some real potential there for them to be game changers and i mean fuck look at the impact that that they had even as losers <laughs> you know what i mean you know like they have that much cultural impact um that, that's lasted like all these decades and unfortunately, a lot of that culture, cultural impact has been, like, traumatization of, you know, like, what I call my people, which is, like, you know, artists and musicians and, and, and punk rockers. And, and, you know, like, so that's really unfortunate because to me, I say, God, what a waste, you know, like, um, that, that, you know, that single act I've witnessed affect, you know, so many generations of artists um, and fans and um, free thinkers and you know what I mean? Like, like, you know, art, you know, people who, who are interested in, in being open-minded and, um, and people who are sensitive and people who do care about things. Um, you know, I've really seen it, you know, that, that one thing has really kind of like made its way into, um, and just into so many people's, um, subconscious and into their art and into their lives in, in a negative sense. And, um, and I don't think that that is cool. Um, at all um, and um, you know I don't, I don't think any couple should emulate Sid and Nancy I mean emulate the music emulate the fashion but there's nothing romantic <laughs> you know there's nothing romantic or punk rock for that matter about um, about drug addiction or or self-destruction um, and I'll tell you why right now Okay, we live in a world, especially in America, um, like, I know, oh, yeah, other countries are worse, da, da, da. well, other countries are better, too. That's not an excuse. Um, we live in a country that makes life very, very difficult for underprivileged people. The, you know, the, the programs, um, the, you know, the programs and the systems that are uh, available to people that, that don't, don't have, you know, anybody to rely on in their life that, you know, that don't have families, um, or spouses or whatever. It, it's, it's really difficult. Um, you know, uh, there really are not, at least that I've found like good, good programs for really any kind of help <laughs> in anything on, if I'm going to be honest with you. Um, as far as like living, as far as medical, as far as any of those things, you know, you, you don't really know until you try to use, a, a, you know, any of it. I mean, I, you know, I'll just take something that won't take me forever to explain, um, off the, you know, uh, off the top of my head as an example, for instance, unemployment, like I'm on unemployment right now. Um, and I won't get into that whole fiasco, but like it pays a third or less of what my checks were. Like, how are you? <laughs> How are you supposed to, well, hi, um, hi, landlord, Can, how about a third of the rent? Those other thirds are coming out of, of being able to eat. Or go out, and do, you know, do things or, you know, whatever. And so anyway, I'm not going to get into all that. My point, my point is we live in a country that has a system that, um, is really already set up against, against underprivileged people. Um, and is also, and, you know, and we also live in a world that, um, you know, that, that makes it, uh, makes it really hard, you know, that makes life harder for people who are, uh, are sensitive, emotional, um, and I'm not even talking about people who are like, you, you know, if they're like mentally ill or something like, like, you know, bipolar or whatever have you, but even just people who are like, you know, sensitive, um, emotional, um, weird, you know, <laughs> like eccentric would be a better word, you know, for, you know, which is like every artist, you know, um, um, people who, who have different philosophies, uh, people who see life differently, um, and, and it's unfortunate that that uh that the world is this way because you know if you look at the world 
um, you know, there's obviously like a lot of problems here. So, you know, the way I see it, it's like, hey, you know what, it would be one thing if this was a perfect place and my freaky ass came here and was fucking it all up. But like, it's not a perfect place. It's like, it's like pretty bad. <laughs> like there's a lot of pretty bad, bad things going on. And the people who are in power are like these normie, you know, normie over pri privileged people. Um, so maybe like, um, and, and, you know, and at the same time, like even the normie over privileged people, like they don't, you know, I don't think most of them like the bad things in life. You know, I think most of them like want wars and stuff like that. So, but my point is, it's very foolish to, um, to, to make life hard for people who are different. Um, because, uh, you know, uh, you know, the people who aren't different haven't been doing a very good job. So maybe someone who's a little weird might have a better answer. Uh, you know, it's just a thought, you know, I, I believe, you know, I do believe in, um, in giving people a chance and people, and you know, letting people help who want to help and who have potential and, you know, who want to survive and, and, you know, who really are trying, trying their best to, um, you know, to get by and, and, and to do something, uh, to do something of, of, of some, some sort of value with their life. Cause like, honestly, I think that is the meaning of life is, you know, to, um, offer something, leave something to society that in some way makes it better, in some way helps, you know? So, so yeah, you know, it just kind of goes back to like, um, you know, for whatever reason, probably because, you know, if we get everybody on that wavelength where, where we are more enlightened and less selfish, um, and more logical, you know, more logical about, you know, th about being fair and kind and, and all that stuff, then we won't really need a government. Um, we won't need a president because, you know, we won't even, you know, like, most of the things that are laws are laws because some dumbass was stupid enough to to do to do them. You know, I mean, the majority of things that are illegal. It's like, why? Why would you do that? You know what I mean? Um, so, um, yeah, I mean, you know, it's the government that makes it really hard for people who are different or free thinkers or, you know, have something to say really hard for them to survive. And, you know, and it's the government that brings in a lot of drugs, um, you know, into the country. Um, and big business media that tends that, that, you know, that tends to target, you know, that tends, tends to target, um, you know, rebellious people or, or free thinkers or, enlightened even people you know basically i mean i'll even call it just people with sight people that that notice what's going on people that aren't afraid to talk about what's going on um people that you know if they weren't strung out on drugs um would you know uh, you know possibly like be able to you know be able to to lead uh people in a better direction or or even just you know it's not necessarily about being some egomaniacal leader, but just being a, a, an example, um, an example of a better way to live. Um, so when you look at it from that perspective, then it's like, okay, punk rock, you're supposed to be like, you know, if you're for anarchy, if you're anti-establishment, you're anti-government, um, and you're anti-mainstream media <laughs> and all these things, um, Why would you, why would you let yourself be a drug addict? Why would you, why would you voluntarily like self-destruct? Um, you're, that's not punk rock at all. You're doing them a favor, you know? And, and then like, you know, and, it, and it's funny cause like punk rockers, you know, they're the first ones to cry when you know, to cry, oh, the cops, they don't care, you know, like, they didn't um, do their job looking into things deeper, da, da, da. And yes, that, that's wrong, like, regardless, you know, it is wrong, and it does suck, but, it, but, but at the same time, it's like, well, <laughs> because they're part of a system where you basically, you know, you basically 
you know, in their eyes, you know, you did them a favor and, and, and you did, you know, when you, if, if you're going to engage in completely self-destructive behavior, you know, you know, we're not talking about people smoking pot or even, you know, taking ecstasy. You're talking about, you know, shooting heroin. Um, that's your, like pretty much, okay. If you're shooting any drug and you die, it's not really an accident, is it? I think the second you, I think the second that you are, are using needles, um, every time you use a needle, it's like a pretty much attempted suicide <laughs> or at, at the least it's definitely equal to self-harm. Um, I mean, it's, it's a violent act. It's a, you know, you're penetrating your body, um, with a needle, <laughs> you know, so yeah. Um, yeah, my, my, you know, so that's sort of my point is that like, like I, you know, I am really disappointed. Um, cause I'm a big punk rock fan. I love the music. I love the fashion, you know, um, you know, as an adult, so, you know, some of the, you know, you know, so, some of it is just sort of like bratty nonsense, but there's also some stuff that's like really insightful, um, and, and brilliant and, and, you know, funny and deep and, you know, I mean, there's like, there's a lot to punk rock and I, there's, there's a lot of things, um, that punk rock has to offer and there's a lot of great things that, that punk rock has to offer women. Um, I've been a part of every subculture and punk rock is like the only one that I was ever treated as an equal in. Um, so there's like all these like really great things about punk rock, um, you know, and then, you know, and then like you have these people that somehow ended up, um, becoming, you know, the, the, the almost enforced like role model of punk rock, um, that, you know, like killed themselves and each other basically even though if you read my blog, you'll see that like, I do, do not, you know, I absolutely do not believe that Sid killed Nancy, but I mean, you know, I think that, you know, Nancy pretty much killed Nancy, you know, when it comes down to it. Um, and I think, you know, I think both of those two pretty much like already had it set in themselves that they were going to go out in some sort of way like that. Um, so whether it was with each other or, or somebody else or at their own hands, like they were going to do something like that. Um, regardless. Um, and, and, and because if I, you know, and, and if and that's one thing I can probably say that I am definitely right about, <laughs> you know, cause all the other details, like there's no way for us to know, but you know, I can say I'm definitely right about that because if I wasn't, they'd be here. Um, for me, punk rock is about, um, surviving and, and, like there's no sense in tearing anything down or rebelling against anything unless you can replace it with something better. Um, you know, there's no sense in being heard unless you have something to say. <laughs> so, you know, um, you know, and I'm not hating on them because they were very young and that's one of the biggest things that most people don't understand, you know, really understand. Like they really overlook that, that not only was, you know, Nancy was only 20 and Sid was 21 when they died and now they were kids, but also everybody around them, you know, the majority of people around them were kids, you know, because I mean, even people like in their 20s are still pretty much, you know, kids. Um, and a lot of people that were, that were in that scene were not even legal. Like you have to remember that in the 70s, I mean, a lot of people that were in that scene, I mean, there were people like as young as, you know, 12 and 13 that, that were hanging around those people. Um, you know, like I think like 16 to 20 would be like probably the average age, um, of, of people that were hanging out with the sex pistols. So, um, so, you know, so yeah, so like, there's no hate, you know, in my heart, uh, uh you know, toward, towards their spirits, um, because they were so young, uh, then that's what makes it unfortunate. But, but I do have like a bit of animosity towards the fact, um, that people are not like, like, like there's still like a lot of people that aren't smart enough to kind of um, realize like what I'm saying right now. And, you know, Hey, you know, like, emulate the rebellion, emulate, you know, the, the fashion, emulate the music, but like there's nothing glamorous or rebellious or punk rock whatsoever about being a drug addict or committing suicide or 
being abusive to your partner. Those are absolutely ridiculous ethos and morals um, for anybody. There, it, it, it's and it's extremely un unintelligent. Um, you are offering yourself to the world, to to the man, to the them, to the government, the establishment, the whatever. You know, whatever you claim that you're fighting against, you're handing yourself to them as a loser when you do that. And, um, you know, and I, you know, and I, I'm sorry, like, sometimes, like, sometimes the things that I say come out harshly. Um, so I apologize for that. Um, but I always say, you know, hey, you know, like, don't, don't take it to heart. You know, sometimes I have to call it like I see it. And, you know, like, yeah, sometimes, you know, sometimes people are losers. But that doesn't mean, you know, that doesn't mean don't hate on yourself and don't be destructive over it. Cause just because you might be a loser today doesn't mean you'll be a loser tomorrow, you know? Um, what it means is like, if you have a drug problem, like, like get off drugs, <laughs> you know, like get yourself help, like make the commitment to like fix your situations. Um, at least like, you know, it, you know, at least do everything that you can, you know, do everything that you can in your power before, before you, before you give up. So, you know, so that includes like, you know, get off drugs. I mean, if you're in a relationship with, with somebody that's like making you want to kill yourself or kill them, you might want to like date other people. No, it's just, just a thought. Um, and if that, you know, I mean, if, if hitting somebody that you love, if, that, if that's the way that, you know, and I'm not talking about like the fetish aspect of it, because that's like, whatever, you know, um, that's, you know, as long as you do it in privacy and it's like your own thing, whatever. But I mean, I, I mean, like when you're having a, like legitimate arguments, fights, conflicts, like if that's how you deal with it, what does that say about your intelligence? You know, I mean, like go for a walk, <laughs> um, you know, rip up some paper, scream, play guitar, like do whatever, you know, go, go to the gym and box. Like, I mean, you know, do whatever you need to do and then come back and uh you know and look at the situation logically and you know listen to each other's feelings and rectify the situation as best you can or realize that that you're not compatible <laughs> um and there's no point in, in continuing with someone if you're you know if, you know if, if you're so so uncompatible that you know that you're so not on the same page that, that it's causing those kind of conflicts you know it's um it's logic there's there is absolutely no logic to the you know participating in the destruction of yourself or anybody that you love um and that's what bothers me um that's what bothers me about um the way that they've kind of um become sort of like anti-heroes but at the same time like like a lot of punk rockers do sort of see them as um even though they might not want to admit it, but they do sort of see them as like archetypes, archetypes to aspire to be. And it's really, really scary because I'm saying this from experience because I know, unfortunately, like on really, really unfortunately, and like, I hate to have to say this, but like, you know, if I'm going to offer anything to society, I have to tell the truth. I have more than like, you know, one friend, sets of friends, I should say, or had because their dad <laughs> who subscribed to that nature of relationship. So it's not just the movies and it's not just a myth and it's not just a legend. Like I have, I have actually, um, you know, I've, I've even, I've experienced it myself even. I mean, on my high school boyfriend, um, we were never abusive to each other, but like after we broke up and, you know, and I moved out to Hollywood, um, he became a heroin addict on his own. Um, you know, he wasn't, you know, he wasn't, uh, he had never done it when I was with them. Thank God. Cause I wouldn't have stayed with him. Um, but he ended up becoming a heroin addict. Um, and he was also a cutter and, you know, we did fuck around with some of, you know, some of that stuff as a lot of teenagers do. Uh, well, you know, he ended up um, dying. Uh, I'm not sure if it was on purpose or not because I wasn't in contact with him anymore. Um, you know, so that was one example. Just, you know, myself. How, how awful. 
Um, you know, I mean, I got out of that state of thinking, but he didn't. Um, and, and then I had, um, several boyfriends and, uh, or, you know, and girlfriends and, um, you know, like friends of mine that were couples that like, they did actually like live that shit out. Um, that's awful to talk about. I don't want to talk about it for too long. Um, but like, yeah, it really happens, you know, um, it really happens. Okay. <laughs> you know, like I know, you know, I've seen it happen. Um, And I'm not blaming a movie and I'm not blaming like history or and I'm not blaming anything. So when it comes down to it, we all have to take responsibility for like how we react to things and our own intelligence on what's right and wrong and you know, and you know, what what's worth emulating and what's not. But you know, but I am just stating my opinion that I you know, that you know, there's other than the way that they dressed. <laughs> And the music and the fact that like I think there was some intention like in their good moments um, to to you know to kind of like get a scene you know or keep the scene going that you know that would have been cool had they not self-destructed um, but the, the rest of the things about Sid and Nancy is not punk rock at all they pretty much you know they pretty much served um, served everything that the establishment and the government and every conservative person, they pretty much served the agenda um, of all those people by doing what they did and making punk rockers look like a bunch of um, dumb, violent junkies. And setting a really bad example um, for you know the future generations um and it's really sad because you know because nancy was you know she was really smart and she worked really really hard to um to finally get get some success in, in the way that she was you know finally getting um you know some business deals you know and getting people to listen to her she was finally like getting the boys to kind of listen to her um and you know so it's really really sad because you know as a, as a female and as a punk rocker you know, like, I would have liked to see, you know, a woman succeed in that, you know, um, and instead it's like, instead it seems like, like the second she got it, like the second, the, you know, the second she, she started, you know, booking those gigs and getting those record deals and putting the project together, it's like crumbled at the first bad fight or something, you know, um, and once again, you know, I'm not hating on it because, you know, she was a kid and, there was a lot of layers of bad stuff going on but but what i am saying is it's really really unfortunate um and it's really unfortunate that like that i didn't grow up with you know with with any you know exam with any good examples of um you know an alternative couple you know uh you know who's who made it who you know who had you know uh you know, a loving relationship and, um, and a family and success and, and, you know, financial success and, you know, really did things their way. Um, but you know, that I could relate to, you know, cause I'm not talking, I'm not even like at this point, like talking about parents and stuff. Obviously parents are very important, but, but, you know, but like, I do think that, that, that also, um, you know, like, um, not necessarily icons cause you don't have to be an icon, but you, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, you know, like, like, kind of like, you know, parents that, that you can relate to a little bit more, you know, which is what, you know, rock stars are supposed to be. Um, and yeah, you know, so it, it sucks. It sucks that there wasn't a real, like, success story for a couple. Um, and, and, and it sucks that, like, that got so ingrained, I feel, in in so much of not just punk rock, but, but goth and, and, and metal and grunge, um, you know, that, that kind of like, don't bother because it won't work out anyway, or, you know, it's just going to be shit anyway. And, you know, live fast, die young, better to burn out than fade away and all, all that crap, you know, I feel, you know, got ingrained, you, you know, 
whether subconsciously or consciously so much um in rock and roll and and you know and, I, and that's I'm, that's sad and and it's also bullshit <laughs> you know because yeah like i said um you know when you're different um or or underprivileged or a minority or a woman even which is insane but that's the reality of of the world that we live in um you know like like life and success is already harder for you um so you know As Sid said, but didn't live up to, don't let them take you alive. Which is, as I interpreted it, it's supposed to mean, you know, don't, don't give in, you know what I mean? Like, um, you know, real punk rock to me is is about survival is that if you can if you can be yourself be different speak your mind um you know and and still find success in this world um then uh, you know with and without hurting anyone you know including yourself um then that's punk rock you know like to me that's winning you know what i mean like, when you make it, you know, whatever making it is for you, it doesn't have to be, you know, music industry, it can be anything, um, you know, any, any kind of, any kind of business, any kind of financial system, anything that gives you the means to survive as yourself and, you know, get to look how you want and get to, you know, listen to the music that you want and dress how you want and talk how you want and say things that you want to say, um, and, and still be a member of society and, and, and have a certain level of respect and power and, you know, like everything else that any other adult has in the world, like that's punk rock, like that's winning to me. And, and that being said, cause I don't want to ramble forever cause I have an awful tendency to do that. That's all I'm going to say, um, on the subject. And, um, and I would just like to personally thank Sharon Osbourne and, and Ozzy Osbourne. I know your marriage is not perfect. Um, no marriage is, but I just do genuinely want to thank them because they survived. You know, you guys, you guys survived, your kids survived and you made it to the level of success where like, regardless of what problems end up coming up, you have the power and the finances to work things out. Um, however you decide to, and to continue, you know, to continue finding happiness in life, you know. Um, however you decide to do so because you guys stuck it out and, you know, um, and stuck together to, uh, you know, long enough to do that. So, the hairstyles might not be as cool, <laughs> but I really do respect you guys and I thank you for, like, showing the world that, that, you know, that the monsters can be um, can be successful too. All right, peace out, you guys.